Greg, recent developments from China's Ministry of Commerce today regarding export permits on critical minerals, in particular graphite, has impacted all of us and surprised us. Did you see this coming? Well, I have to say I didn't see it coming, but I'm not surprised by it, Tracy. Uh, this is really the move that we saw start about two years ago with the Inflation Reduction Act in the U.S., where the Biden administration, along with the, the, uh, the folks here in Canada, saw the reliance on China and the, the, the amount of minerals, critical minerals that were being supplied out of China to the EV market. And they saw that as a potential risk going forward as the geopolitical backdrop was um, really starting to sour particularly the, the relationship between China and the U.S. And about a week ago, we or even earlier, that might have been earlier this week, we saw the U.S., we saw the Biden administration put restriction on uh, semiconductor chip sales to China. And I believe this is China's retaliation. However, we knew that this was coming, that we've the, the governments have identified this as a major risk. And that's why we've started to see uh, interest in creating domestic supply chains. So earlier this year, we saw we had decided to spin out our Albany graphite deposit. That is uh, a very, very unique deposit that we have here in Ontario, Canada, very large deposit. And with the backdrop of the Inflation Reduction Act and the amount of money that was going into battery supply chains here in Canada, we made a decision that we were going to spin out the Albany graphite deposit, raise some money and move it ahead towards production. However, earlier this year, we saw a, precip a precipitous drop in the price of graphite globally. It's down about 30 to 40%. And that's a bit of a head scratcher given the demand that we're seeing in the EV space. But again, where does the majority of the graphite that goes into batteries come from? It comes from China. So when they saw the opportunity to put pressure on graphite pricing, therefore making North American or projects outside of China uh, less attractive, we believe they took that opportunity to push the price down. Now they've taken another avenue where now they're restricting the supply of graphite out of China. Again, highlighting the importance of creating a North American uh, battery supply chain. So we're not surprised by it at all. It's just, again, it's just raising its head in another form and, again, reinforces the need to get governments and industry moving to get this supply chain built. Well, and speaking of the supply chain, how do you think this is going to impact, you know, graphite importers like Japan and South Korea? It's interesting. I, I personally believe this was a bit of a retaliation against the U.S., but based on the statements coming out of China, it sounds like it's a global restriction. So it should impact, it looks like it's probably going to impact the, the Japanese and the Koreans in the same manner. And they're going to be looking for uh, opportunities to uh, 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 de-risk the supply chains from their perspective as well, i.e. de-risk away from China, looking at North America or other potential avenues. All right, so let me ask the obvious question. Where are we going to get our graphite, Greg? Well, I can tell you what, about one wonderful project right here in Ontario, the Albany Graphite Deposit. We are probably three or four years away from putting that into production. But again, we have a very, very large source of very unique high purity graphite right here in Ontario. There are a few other projects in Canada. Nouveau Mon, for example, has a a very big green clean process that they're working on right now. You see their, their stock is up 40% today based on the news. So it looks like there's going to be uh, an increased focus back in North American graphite producers. So I think it's the time to for uh, governments and industry to step up and start investing in these projects. You think this is gonna change the EV landscape? I think it has the potential to change it significantly. 
the, the, the car manufacturers, while we've seen a, a fairly significant drop off this year in EV demand, I think that's just short term. There's a very obviously difficult economic backdrop, but I think longer term, you're going to continue to see the demand for EVs uh, continue to grow. And the, the manufacturers, the, uh, the vehicle manufacturers are going to have to diversify their, uh, diversify their supply chain and what better place to do it right here in North America. Greg, I know your phone is ringing off the hook. So uh, I have to say, though, Zentech uh, shareholders must be very happy because you've been leaders in the graphite space and graphite technologies for a very long time. Yeah, it's been uh, it, it has been a busy day. Surprisingly, I was uh, um, actually a little surprised at how quickly the news hit and started to resonate. But again, that's what Zentech's all about. Zentech has three pillars. Zentech is an advanced materials development company. We have our our first patented product coming to market. Zengard on we have it on on face masks now. But we have we're most excited about the HVAC space and the 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 technology we've developed there. We've also got our biotech platform that we just rolled out uh, a couple of months ago, and we're incredibly excited about that. But we've also got the Albany deposit, and we know the value embedded in the Albany deposit. So from a pure investment perspective, you've got a well-diversified portfolio of assets that are going to bring value in many different ways. And again, we're seeing how important it is to have that underpinning of Albany as a, a, a store of value for shareholders. As always, Greg, thank you. And for more information on Zentech, please go to the following website.